Um, interestingly, I've had my finger on the pulse of these drugs since their origins. My PhD lab, my dissertation lab, was one of the first funded labs in the U.S. to study the incretins, these gut hormones, because it was at a medical school where they were pioneering some of the earliest versions of, what, uh, of the gastric bypass procedures. And that was leading, as the guts were being replumbed, um, you know, moved around, yep. that was leading to profound differences in GLP-1. It didn't even have a name yet, if I can recall at the time. We just knew there was a bunch of hormones coming from the gut that were massively changed post gastric bypass. So, so I have. Sorry to quit interrupting. Yeah. So, for those that are listening, 99% of people won't know this. So, GLP 1 is actual natural. We do, we do yeah. produce it. Anyway. Yeah, GLP 1 is a hormone made from the intestines. What's been funny for me as a professor who teaches a graduate level endocrinology course is that on the very first day of class, I show my students the prototypical endocrine organs, the thyroid gland, the adrenal glands, the gonads, the testes and the ovaries, these famous endocrine glands. And then I show them the brain. It makes hormones. The heart makes hormones. Muscles make hormones. The bone makes hor bones make hormones. And yes, even the intestines. And among these dozens of hormones is GLP-1. And mind you, some others that are being exploited, not exploited, are being leveraged with regards to various medications. When the GLP-1 receptor agonists, so a drug now that is injected that essentially takes the GLP-1 signal and dials it up tremendously to a super physiological level. In its earliest stages, and I will touch on this in my talk today, I was quite an advocate of them because it was a relatively low dose and the only real effect was that it would inhibit glucagon. And as glucagon was inhibited, being insulin's opposite, whereas insulin wants to reduce blood glucose, glucagon wants to increase blood glucose, with the inhibition of glucagon came a very quick and often substantial reduction in blood glucose, thereby resolving people's type 2 diabetes quite well. And at the time, it was just noticed as a somewhat charming side effect that the people tended to eat a little less. Well, that has now been fully exploited, I'll use the word then, that now quite liberally, by dialing up this dose by four or five times, and now it's a different name of a drug, it's literally the same molecule, just at a different concentration with its own patent, and now its own name, and now the main effect is this essential, I'm gonna be a little dramatic, which doesn't suit my job as a scientist well, but it does leave an impression on people, essentially is a paralysis of the intestines. That's the main mechanism of action where people will say, I take these drugs and the food noise goes away. Yeah, it's because food is now staying in your stomach for over 24 hours. I mean, so it's it only slows supposed... gastric emptying. Yes. Which you could do quite nicely with fiber. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, so there are that. That's part of what I end my talk with today, which is basically painting this picture that GLP-1 is undoubtedly a metabolic advantage. We want GLP-1. Protein will increase it. Fats, various fats will increase, not all kinds. Certain carbohydrates will, but so too does fiber. Fiber directly stimulates the L cells of the small intestine, which are the cells that make GLP-1. So there are a lot of ways for people to take advantage of GLP-1, whose main effect is to promote a sense of satiety by slowing the intestines down. If the intestinal movement slows down a little, it'll help you feel fuller longer. The problem with these GLP-1 agonists, these drugs, is it slows them down too much, where you have actual cases where people experience permanent paralysis of the intestines and are left to get nutrition through infusion for the rest of their life and have a colostomy bag or some other way of defecating that doesn't involve the use of their intestines because they're dead, essentially.